15. I'm Ruthie. Um, I think when people hit 30, they have a birthday. I say there aren't very women, many women my age who could have a 30th birthday. But we did have a 30th birthday of the River Cafe in September. And to celebrate it, we wrote a book. Uh, it was actually the publishers who said, why don't you write a book? And um, we said, okay, we did it in quite a short time. And uh, we did it together, uh, Sean and Joseph, and I practically did very little else, but work with the designers, work with the photographers, and create this book. And so tonight, um, we're going to talk for five minutes each, which is um, really nice for us. And Sean first is going to talk about a kind of life in the day, the day in the life of a restaurant. Joseph is going to take you through a recipe, and then I will tell you a little bit about the story of how it all began. Thank you. Oh. Oh, evening. Um, <laughs> Um, I'm just going to talk um, quickly about um, how we write uh, the menu at the River Cafe because I don't know how many of you guys have been to the restaurant before, but um, we actually change the menu uh, twice a day, every day of the year, uh, every, every, you know, every day of the year, 365 days a year, and we've changed the menu for the last 30 years. So it's quite a lot of menus we've written um, every day. Um, and I guess the, the idea of writing the menu every day, um, Rose and Ruth, um, had was it was like having a dinner party in your own home. So, um, you know, if you've got 30 people coming, 200 people like we did yesterday, or maybe 1,000 people like we did for the party, we look at it like it's a dinner party for you. So we're going to do what you guys do at home, which is to um, open the fridge, see what's in the fridge, um, go out shopping, and then um, cook for you. So we just, um, this, is how, this is the approach we take at the River Cafe every day. Um, so I, I just want to tell you quickly about um, my day today. Um, so um, following on from a Sunday, which is like our busiest day of the week, you walk into the restaurant and it's, you can walk in and you can actually feel the, you know, the customers of the day before. And you can feel like the echoes of the kind of busy service you're following on from because every day just rolls into another. And so I, I cycled into work and... Um, I just cycled along the river and I just looked out at the kind of grey London day um, thinking, what do I want to eat? I mean, I guess I start there, probably like anyone else would if they're running a Michelin star restaurant, um, <laughs> you know, cooking for London's finest. Um, and I thought, what, what do I want to eat today? And I thought it was a really rubbish November day. But late autumn, early winter, a lovely time culinarily. We've got, um, you know, porcini and pumpkins and... Uh, Truffles, white truffles, if you can afford them, and um, new, new seasons of olive oil. So culinarily, it's a really nice time of year for a chef. But also, it's a Monday, so every chef loves a Monday because it's the quietest day of the week, unlike everyone else who probably hates a Monday. So <laughs> we're all rocking into work on a Monday thinking, what am I going to cook? And then you think, well, how many covers do we have? It's a quiet day. We've got about 60 people booked. So... Um, sort of start thinking, well, oh my God, what am I going to do? How many people are coming in? What do people want to eat today? You kind of think like, oh, it's Monday. P people probably expect in the autumn to uh, eat food, like stodgy, heavy winter food, but you might want to do something that's fresh for people or, you know, invigorate them with some sort of winter citrus or crispy, lovely salad leaves that you get at this time of year. Um, and you've got a team of chefs. We've got 25 chefs in the River Cafe kitchen, and we've got about 100 staff, so, you know, we have to teach, we have to teach chefs to cook, um, and we also have to inspire people that have worked there for a long time. Um, so I'll sit down and start writing the menu, um, and, and also thinking, you know, that some people are coming in to have a business lunch, but, um, you know, some people, for some people, it's, it's a real celebration today, even if it is a rubbish Monday in London. You know, there's got to be someone out there that's coming in for an anniversary or a birthday, you know, so everyone, you want that menu you write to sort of tick every box for everyone that's coming in. Um, and so, um, yeah, so I sort of, uh, so while I'm writing, oh, sorry, one more minute, oh, sorry, yep. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, oh, so it's really boring. Um, yeah. <laughs> so we, uh, yeah, so I sort of, um, the waiters do all the prep, 
the chefs scale the fish and um, you know the waiters are, um, the waiters take a big part in the meal that you all eat because they all prep the spinach and peel the potatoes and um, the chefs do you know everything from scratch fillet of fish take the meat off the bone just like you do at home um, and the menu's written by about half past ten um, everyone cooks gets ready for lunch um, we're all um, Everyone's working to two deadlines a day. We have lunch and dinner. They're non-negotiable. We have to be there. Um, and then um, we have an hour and a half where we cook the food. All the chefs, um, we split the jobs up between everyone. There's no hierarchy in the kitchen. Everyone's considered to be equal. And um, we each take a job we want to do. Um, experienced people might make pasta or a risotto, and a new chef might, you know, boil some spinach or some potatoes. Um, well, maybe if they're lucky. <laughs> um, and then we, um, everyone gets set, put on a section. No one has a section. No one, can, no one knows really what they're doing. We just split it up, like who fancies doing what. And then at midday, we talk to the waiters and tell all the waiters um, about the menu we've written, what's exciting, try and inspire them to feel like it's the best place to work on earth, which of course it is, and, um, and tell them who's coming in. And then midday, um, the first customers trickle into the restaurant, the curtain goes up, we're all on show, and uh, here we go again, another performance in the restaurant. Um, so... Uh, at the River Cafe, there is a very famous cake called a chocolate nemesis, and uh, I'm going to talk about that. And it's a really important cake in the restaurant, and it's the only thing, as Sean's describing, the days are so changing, and every day we cook different food, except for the chocolate nemesis, which we have to have, and um, we never run out, honestly. And um, so this chocolate nemesis is also very important for the book that uh, Ruth and Rose published in uh, 95 and became a very infamous uh, recipe that apparently no one could make. So I thought I'd take you through the recipe and explain it to you so you can make it today. <laughs> and um, it's a very dense, dark cake and it's all about the texture. And it's very, very simple. It's, although it couldn't be more different from all the other iconic River Cafe recipes like uh, ribolita soup and all the vegetable dishes that I love uh, an awful lot. It is exactly the same in that it has so few ingredients. So the, river uh, the nemesis is made with 675 grams of chocolate. We use an Amadei number no. 9 chocolate, which is very special. Uh, it's used with 10 eggs, 575 grams of um, sugar, and 450 grams of butter. And that's it. This is a chocolate nemesis. Just these few ingredients make something which is so uh, uh, luscious that you wouldn't believe. And you melt the chocolate with the butter over some water um, very carefully while you take a tin, a big circular tin, not the one with the gaps in, and you put a piece of paper in the bottom of the tin. Then in the meantime, you begin to whisk uh, 10 of the eggs with one third of the sugar in uh, your mixer, whichever brand is going to be, until it comes full to the top, like almost overflowing. And the rest of the sugar you just um, melt in 250 mils of water. Then this sugar syrup you add to the melted chocolate. So you have a big bowl of melted chocolate with butter and sugar syrup and a big, um, another bowl completely full of very voluminous um, eggs whipped with a lot of air in. Then you pour the sugar and the chocolate into the eggs, trying to take out some of the volume. So it doesn't, you, you feel like they won't fit in the bowl, but they will just crush in. And then this, um, this chocolate mixture, you pour into the tin you prepared, you put that inside another tin, fill with hot water, and you bake in the oven at 130 degrees for two and a half hours. And that is how you make a chocolate nemesis. At the edges of the cake, when it's ready, you would almost, if you put your hand very lightly on the top, you can pull it away from the edge and you will realize that it's become one whole thing. And the only thing that is difficult with a nemesis is knowing when it's cooked. Um, it takes potentially one failed nemesis and then you'll never, you'll never make the mistake again. Um, I think I should... Um, 
also tell you that it has 11,000 calories. Uh, uh, but it is quite a large cake. <laughs> and um, we worked out today that we've made uh, 38,000 uh, nemesis in 30 years. Um, so about um, 418 million calories. But not, not a calorie uh, too many, not a spare. Um, and absolutely no flour in this cake, so um, you've got no guilt to eat it. Um, there were some other things about nemesis that I can't remember. So... Um, this. Um, I thought I would just tell you a bit about how we started. Rose and I, in 1987, opened a restaurant in Hammersmith. Uh, there was, it was considered, now it's more accessible, though we did have a woman who came here not quite recently, and when we asked her where she was going because she wanted a taxi, she said London. So that was, um, it is still a little bit out of the way. Um, <laughs> Uh, we, were, we were two women who probably didn't know necessarily what a restaurant was, but we knew what it wanted, we wanted it to be. We wanted it to be, uh, the, we want, most of all, we wanted to cook the kind of food that both of us had eaten and cooked in Italy. Rose lived in Luca for five years, and uh, my Italian family. Uh, taught me how to make, because I didn't speak Italian, I used to spend all my time in the kitchen when I visited the families. And so I think that both of us knew that. We also wondered why um, we couldn't eat that kind of food at that time, Italian food in London. We also wanted it to be a restaurant at those days, and it wasn't just Rose and I, there was Roly Lee, there was Alice Walters in Los Angeles, Wolfgang Puck, who were thinking, that in a way, if you went out to eat, you could either eat very, very good food, but be terrified of the sommelier. You'd be worried about being late. You'd be worried about what you were going to wear. Um, and it was very, it could be very intimidating, intimidating to eat a very good meal. Or else you could have fun. You know, you could go to the local trattoria and have a great time, but probably not eat so well. So we thought, why can't, and a lot of us in that period, um, thought, why can't we do both? And Rose and I had, had uh, always had, um, two, we had two things very strongly in common. One is that all our family, both had large families, participated in uh, cooking food. We didn't have a kitchen in the back of our house. We had open kitchens. We had kitchens that were part of the um, living space. And so that made, and we wanted to create that. So in the first River Cafe, you actually walked through the kitchen to get to your table. And though we also knew that we wanted everybody who worked in the River Cafe to, um, to participate, whether you were a kitchen porter helping clean the squid, or you were a waiter having prepped the parsley, and of course, if you were a chef. And we were very, very small. We had a lot of restrictions. We could only be open at lunchtime. We could only be open to the people who worked in the, in the neighborhood, in the, in the offices there. And so that meant those restrictions actually helped us. I always say that we grew with the restaurant. And um, 30 years later, the River Cafe, yeah, as Sean said, I worked yesterday and we did actually not 200, but we did 231. And I think that um, things have changed, as Charles will tell you, as Lucy and Hester Rose's children are here have, and have changed, but um, the values and the principles that we started with um, are still very, very much there as is the nemesis, and as is squid, rocket, and chili. But we have grown, you know, Sean and Joseph, um, as you might see if you look at the new cookbook, will show you that the, the new book is about, um, it's about the story of a restaurant. It's how we started. It's a story of, of opening it, of how we've grown, and it's a story of Rose. And it is also the story about the future. It's a story about how we want to be and how we've grown and how we uh, want to learn more about cooking and how we go to Italy. Right now, as I speak, um, 
there are 20 uh, chefs and managers, uh, the 20 Charles, I think about 20 in Piemonte, visiting vineyards, um, tasting the food. We, we take, um, and last week a group came back. So there's a continuous learning and um, challenges that we face, as Sean explained. And um, I think, I would just say one other thing, which is about what is a restaurant? Why, what do we, I always think a restaurant um, is a very public place where people do very private things. And actually sometimes they do very private things very publicly. You know, we've had, um, you know, a woman took off her shirt because she had a bet with somebody at her table. And, um, and we've had, um, you know, tears. But we've also, you see that people, Maybe there's something safe about a restaurant. So I don't know if any of you have had, the, you know, either been proposed to in a restaurant, although we did have a man who I think probably is quite a famous story who called up and said, um, I'm going to propose tonight and uh, would you make a cake and write on the cake, will you marry me? And so we did. And then halfway through the meal, he came up and he said, please cancel the cake. <laughs> so, um, you know, uh, so you... You know, you wonder about the people who've been there. You wonder about, the, and, and I think the reason that, you know, perhaps a lot of actors have always liked to work in restaurants is they are very theatrical. There is, as Sean said, the curtain literally goes up at a certain point. And, you know, before, and there are still many restaurants, and I like going to those as well, where the drama takes place behind closed doors. So the kitchen is back there. So all the drama is, is, is played back between the waiters and the chefs and the chefs and the chefs. And then there's a kind of quiet inside where the drama is in there. But in the River Cafe, the, there's a drama which you can see played out between the waiters and the chefs and the chefs and the chefs. Though there isn't, you know, there's a kind of control drama because you're in, a, in, a, in an open space. There's a drama between the waiter and the customer, and then of course, as I said, there's the drama that goes on in, in the restaurant between the customers, and the customers are so important. And I think you sense, you know, what, whether they like the food, whether they're happy, whether we've, and our only goal in the restaurant is to make, I feel, people feel protected, feel safe, and ultimately, when they leave, feel happy, happier than when they arrived. Um, I had to give a little talk to my granddaughter's school in New York a few years ago. They were all about four or five years old. And I said, why do we go to restaurants anyway? Why do you go to restaurants? You have food at home, you have kitchens at home, you have good cooks at home. Why do we go out? And uh, one child raised their hand and said, we go out uh, when it's my grandmother's birthday. And another one said, we go out when my dad has, wants to celebrate something for my mom, or we go out when um, somebody's come to town and we want to do that. And then my granddaughter, the uh, granddaughter child of a, a son that I hope I taught how to cook and grew up in a family of food and, you know, her grandmother had a restaurant, she raised her hand and she said, uh, we go out to eat when there's nothing in the fridge. <laughs> so <laughs> I think we all do go out to restaurants. We go out for many, many different reasons. Um, and I think that if Rose and I didn't know what a restaurant was when we started, I think 30 years later, Sean and Joseph and Charles and myself and the 100 people who work there know why a restaurant is. Thank you. <laughs>